prejudicial question. Um, a petition for suspension of criminal action must be filed before the prosecutor or the to the court conducting the, the preliminary investigation. And your petition for suspension of criminal action must be based on the ground of um, the presence of a prejudicial question in a civil action filed. There are two elements that we need to consider um, to consider for a prejudicial question to exist. The very first is that there is previously instituted civil action. And such civil action um, involves an issue. Involves an issue similar or intimately related to the issue raised in the subsequent criminal action. So it means to say there is an issue um, in the civil action that is very connected or related to the subsequent filing of criminal action. Then the second element would be the resolution or the decision of the court on that issue determines the innocence or guilt of the accused. So it therefore, um, there is the presence of <clears throat> prejudicial question. So in Pimental versus Pimentel, the private respondent filed an action for prostrated parricide against petitioner. Then several after several months after the petitioner filed a declaration of nullity of their marriage. And then after that, the petitioner filed a motion to suspend on the ground of prejudicial question since the relationship between the private respondent and the petitioner is the key element of parricide. So whether or not the motion be granted. No, it should not be granted. You know why? Um, prejudicial question contemplates a situation where the civil case is first filed before the criminal case. There will be a prejudicial question if the civil action is filed ahead of the criminal action. Again, a civil action must be filed um, before criminal action in order to have a um, prejudicial question. That's one of the requirements. And the second requirement should be the issue in the civil case is not determinative of the guilt <clears throat> or innocence of the accused in the criminal case. So, in this case, so in this case, there is filing first of criminal action um, before the civil action. So, prejudicial question should not be entertained, should not be a ground for to suspend the criminal action because the criminal action was filed ahead of the civil action. <clears throat> in addition, the resolution in the declaration of nullity of their marriage is not um, a determinative of innocence or guilt in the um, parricide case. Uh, take note that an action for declaration of nullity of marriage is not a prejudicial question to a concubinage case. The civil case, always take note that a civil case must be a determinative of the guilt or innocence of the accused in the criminal case. So that's the prejudicial question. Again, prejudicial question. Civil case must be a determinative of the guilt or innocence of the accused in the criminal case. If that is the case, if that is the um, if that is the fact present in the civil case, therefore raised it as a petition to suspend the criminal action on the ground of prejudicial question. Preliminary investigation. That's rule one one two. So. Um, preliminary investigation results in the in either the dismissal of the complaint for want of probable cause or for the filing of information. So, preliminary the purpose of preliminary investigation is to determine if there is probable cause in the complaint filed. If there is none, then dismiss it. If there is the presence of probable cause, then file it, fail, file information to the court. So, uh, in the law, preliminary investigation, if you are asking what is a preliminary investigation, it is an inquiry 
or proceeding to determine whether there is sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial section 1 of rule 112 again the purpose of preliminary investigation is to build a well-founded belief build a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and that the respondent is probably guilty thereof and should be held for trial when to conduct a preliminary investigation or when pre when is preliminary investigation is required so it is required for cases for imposable penalty of imprisonment imposable penalty of imprisonment for four years two months and one day so or more so that's the time preliminary um, investigation is required when it is not required um when the respondent is first when the respondent is arrested in flagrante delicto flagrante delicto that is actual cause in the act we're in as a review um, under section um, 5 of one rule 113 um, any officer or private person in his presence um, the person to be arrested is actually committing or attempting to, to commit the crime so once the respondent is actually committing or attempting to commit a crime then therefore he could be arrested so once he, could, he is arrested he is in flagrante delicto he is exempted from preliminary investigation but he is subject to inquest proceeding next the next instance wherein preliminary investigation is not required is that those penalty of less than four years two months and one day of imprisonment <clears throat> the nature and purpose so the conduct of preliminary investigation belongs to the public prosecutor that's the executive function of the um, public prosecutor to conduct a preliminary investigation that is his executive function the determination of probable cause is under our criminal justice system an executive function that courts cannot interfere with in the absence of grave abuse of discretion so the so the executive function of public public prosecutor in conducting preliminary investigation cannot be interfered by the court only only when there is grave of use of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction and file immediately a certiorari under rule 65 our um, preliminary investigation is only a a statutory right not a constitutional right the holding of preliminary investigation is not required by the constitution thus it is not a constitutional right rather a statutory character and may be invoked only when specifically created by statute though not a constitutional grant it is not a constitutional right but the denial of um, conducting a preliminary investigation deprives the right to due process deprives the accused of due process so the right to preliminary investigation may be waived it can be waived for failure to invoke the right prior to or at the time of plea so it can be waived by failure to invoke it so waiver failure is different from denial in fact the absence of preliminary investigation will not affect the jurisdiction of court so the absence of that preliminary investigation does not affect the jurisdiction of the court next to establish probable cause um it is it's the purpose of preliminary investigation again is not to declare the respondent guilty beyond reasonable doubt no it's just it is already the job of the court during trial to establish the guilt of the accused beyond reasonable doubt only 
the proof in preliminary investigation is whether the respondent is is probable guilty thereof and should be held for trial if you are wondering what's what is a probable cause um probable cause pertains to the facts and circumstances these are facts and circumstances sufficient to support a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and the accused is probably guilty thereof so that's the ultimate goal of probable cause is to determine uh determine the facts and circumstances that that is that will build a well-founded belief that the crime has been committed and the respondent is probable guilty thereof and should be held for trial the evidence the evidence necessary to establish probable cause is based only on the likelihood or probability of of guilt only the probability probability of guilt but when it comes with evidentiary matters um such as the admissibility of testimonies and evidence are better ventilated during trial proper than at the preliminary investigation level so those um, um qualifications of the testimony their admissibility the weight of evidences the validity of merit the validity and merits of parties defenses and accusation should be ventilated properly during trial not in the preliminary investigation that is in the case of hasegawa versus kiron so take note in determining probable cause the prosecutor or the average man weighs facts and circumstances without resorting to the rules of evidence that as a rule is outside his technical knowledge so the prosecutor in conducting preliminary investigation will not resort to the rules of evidence the technicality because it is properly ventilated during trial in court so question is hearsay evidence sufficient to establish probable cause yes technical rules in evidence should not be applied in preliminary investigation so therefore um, hearsay from witnesses um, can be used uh, as a circumstances to establish probable cause what are instances when probable cause need to be established so by the prosecutor the purpose of prosecutor is to file information in court so he needs to conduct preliminary investigation by the judge can the judge is conducting preliminary investigation for the purpose of issuance of warrant of arrest or necessity of the accused to remain in detention or in custody uh, or the commitment order so the the prosecutor will just on, only for the purpose of filing information but by the judge it's the purpose of issuing a warrant of arrest or commitment order if the accused is already detained by the arresting officer um in effecting or curing a warrantless arrest in hot pursuit in effecting warrantless arrest in hot pursuit that's the purpose for arresting officer and another also for the purpose um purpose by the judge in conducting preliminary investigation is to issue search warrant 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 arrest commi or commitment order and um search warrant in addition the preliminary investigation conducted by the prosecutor is an executive function while the preliminary examination is a judicial function by a judge the both preliminary investigation and preliminary examination establishes probable cause for prosecutor again it is to filing information in court to file information in court for the judge is to issue warrant of arrest commitment order uh, and um, search warrant again judge cannot interfere with pro prosecutor's function to determine probable cause because this is an encroachment of powers in lieu of doctrine of separation of powers 
However, um, judiciary has expanded power to review acts and decisions of the executive department, like prosecutor's discretion in establishing probable cause when there is grave abuse discretion. Again, courts judges cannot in cannot interfere with the executive function of the prosecutor um only if there is only if there is a um grave abuse of discretion amounting to excess or lack of jurisdiction who are those officers authorized to conduct preliminary investigation the very first is that the provincial city or city state prosecutors provincial or city prosecutors and their assistants national and regional state prosecutors and other officers as may be authorized by law who are these other author officers authorized by law these are the pcgg for the ill-gotten wealth while comelec uh, under section 265 of the omnibus election code and third is the ombudsman the power of ombudsman to conduct preliminary investigation may be made on its own or by a complaint by any person on any act or omission of any public official or employee office or agency when such act or omission appears to be illegal, unjust, improper, or inefficient. So that is only the instance where ombudsman can make a preliminary investigation on any public official, employee, office, or agency committing any act or omission that is unjust, um, unjust illegal, improper, or inefficient. The ombudsman has the primary jurisdiction over cases cognizable with the Sandigan Bayan in, in the exercise of this primary jurisdiction. It may take over at any stage from any investigating agency of the government. The investigation of such cases, it is not exclusive but concurrent with other similarly authorized agencies of the government such as the provincial, city, and state prosecutors so even though the complaint was filed with the doj the doj is concurrently concurrent with um has concurrent jurisdiction to make investigation with the ombudsman provided such case filed is cognizable under sandigan bayan as a review um the original jurisdiction of sandigan bayan over those cases um committed by government officials with salary grade of 27 and above provincial governors vice governors members of sangguniang panlalawigan um provincial provincial treasurers assessors engineers and other provincial department heads City mayors, vice mayors, members of Sangguniang Panglunsod, city treasurers, assessors, engineers, and other city department heads, including those officials of diplomatic ser service occupying the position of consul and higher, the Philippine Army and Air Force colonels, naval captains, and all officers of higher rank, officers of the PNP while occupying the position of provincial director and those holding the rank of senior superintendent who is now a full-pledged colonel and higher city and provincial prosecutors then their assistants and officials and prosecutors in the office of the ombudsman the presidents directors trustees or managers of gocc um, universities state universities or educational institutions or foundations members of congress and their officials members of judiciary chairman and members of the constitutional commissions the comile COA, and civil service and all other national and, and local officials classified as salary grade 27 and above this time let's go to the procedure of preliminary investigation so first um, submit the complaint to the prosecutor who will become the investigating prosecutor file an affidavit 
of complaint together with your evidence to be presented to a prosecutor. Then the prosecutor will now assess whether it has probable cause or not. Again, there will be a preliminary investigation if the penalty, if the imposable penalty is 4 to 1, 4 years, 2 months, and 1 day or higher. If the prosecutor finds probable cause, he will issue a subpoena um, addressed to the respondent. Issue subpoena and upon receiving the, the of subpoena by the respondent, the respondent will file a counter affidavit. What if the respondent files a counter affidavit? So therefore, there can be a hearing, but the hearing is optional to the prosecutor. The prosecutor will just only conduct a hearing but a clarificatory hearing to clarify information alleged in the complaint and counter affidavit. What if the prosecutor, uh, the respondent did not file a counter affidavit? The prosecutor shall resolve the case in lieu of the claim, claim in lieu of the claimant's complaint only. So the prosecutor will just only make a resolution based on the filed count, filed affidavit of complaint and evidences attached to it. If there is no count file, uh, counter affidavit filed. So, if there is probable cause, the prosecutor shall forward his resolution within five days from his fulfillment of resolution to chief prosecutor. Okay? With chief prosecutor. If, um, going back, if the respondent did not file a counter affidavit and the, the prosecutor did not find any probable cause without probable cause, then obviously the prosecutor will dismiss it. If the prosecutor did not find any probable cause, it will dismiss the case. The prosecutor shall, shall forward his resolution within five days um, to the chief prosecutor, recommending the dismissal. If there is probable cause, the prosecutor will submit the resolution, his resolution to the chief prosecutor for filing of information. Now, the investigating prosecutor's resolution was forwarded already to the chief prosecutor for approval. So, it will be acted within 10 days from receipt of the investigating prosecutor's resolution. Here, investigating prosecutor shall submit in the HUD office. A city prosecutor submit it to the chief prosecutor. If in province, provincial prosecutor. If in region, pro regional state prosecutor. In DOJ, submit it to prosecutor general. If there is approval of the recommendation of investigating prosecutor, then therefore, um, file it to the court. If not approved by the um, by the chief prosecutor, the chief prosecutor now may by himself prepare a different resolution. And he himself also filed the information in court upon um, different resolution. Now, there are two, whether or, or not, up, whether approved or not by the chief prosecutor. There are two course. Approved there are two courts for the investigating prosecutor's resolution. There will be two situations that will happen. First, approved by the chief prosecutor. Second, is not approved by the chief prosecutor. Let's go to approved resolution. If the recommendation of the investigating prosecutor is to file information in court, then approved by the chief prosecutor, the effect will be file a case in the court what if the, rec the recommendation of investigating officer is to dismiss then therefore approved by the pros chief prosecutor dismiss the claim dismiss the complaint that is for the resolutions approved what if the resolution is not approved by the chief prosecutor if the investigating prosecutor um 
files or recommends the filing of information but this approved by the chief prosecutor then therefore the effect will be the dismissal of the complaint what if if the recommendation of the investigating prosecutor is to dismiss the complaint up, the, not approved by the chief prosecutor so this time it is now the chief prosecutor will make a different resolution with the chief prosecutor will himself make another um or different resolution and he himself may file the information to court upon a different resolution but the res the not approval by the chief prosecutor of the recommendation of the investigating prosecutor is subject to the um, petition for review in the secretary of justice so again if the investigating um if the resolution of the investigating officer prosecuting officer is not approved by the chief um chief prosecutor is not approved by the chief prosecutor the remedy of the aggrieved party is go to the um secretary of justice and file for petition for review the decision of the secretary of justice uh in that petition for review is final and executory except um the remedy again by the aggrieved party the is to file um rule 65 certiorari if in case there is um grave abuse of discretion amounting to excess or lack of jurisdiction exercised by the secretary of justice so the parties um aggrieved by the decision of the chief prosecutor in not approving the recommendation of investigating prosecutor kumbaga the chief prosecutor did not approve any of the recommendation of the investigating prosecutor the aggrieved party may go to or uh, may file for motion for reconsideration muna file motion for reconsideration um to the chief prosecutor then if the case has already been filed the information has been filed already in a court so a copy of the motion to defer proceedings filed in court must and also um accompany with it the petition so if the information is already filed in court file the motion for reconsideration together with the petition for review together with the petition for review to the court where is where the information is filed file petition for review to secretary of justice within 15 days from receipt of the resolution or of the denial of the motion for reconsideration or reinvestigation so you file a motion for reconsideration to the chief prosecutor then you file a motion for reconsideration to the chief prosecutor or motion for investigation then it was denied then therefore file already to the secretary of justice petition for review within 15 days this time if the information is already filed but the information was already filed in court before arraignment the accused has not yet arraigned or not yet been arraigned the arraignment shall be suspended that's the effect the arraignment shall be suspended if a petition for review of the resolution of the prosecutor is pending at either the doj or the office of the president provided that the period of suspension shall not exceed 60 days counted from the filing of the petition with the reviewing office so so the information was already filed to the court and then there is already the information was filed in the court the aggrieved party filed already for petition for review in the secretary of justice in effect the arraignment shall be suspended it shall be suspended for only 60 days for only six for only six days it shall not exceed 60 days mm -mm. um the petition for review is pending at either the DOJ or the office of the president. 
what if if the accused had already been arraigned so the petition for review shall not be given due course by the secretary of justice so that's the effect if the accused had already been arraigned it will the petition for review will not anymore be given due course by the secretary of justice now it should be um petition for review must be filed before the arraignment of the accused now there is already petition for review filed with the secretary of justice the secretary of justice will um may reverse or modify the resolution of the provincial or city prosecutor or chief state prosecutor and direct the prosecutor concerned so um it may reverse or modify the resolution of the chief state prosecutor mm -hmm. and direct the investigating prosecutor concerned either first either to file the corresponding information without conducting another preliminary investigation so file file with file the file comp file information without doing any more preliminary investigation or to dismiss or move for the dismissal or withdrawal of the complaint or information with notice to the parties so that is the resolution of the secretary of justice either to direct filing in court the information without conducting any another any another um preliminary investigation or to withdraw or dismiss the case take note the same rule shall apply in preliminary investigations conducted by the officers of the office of the ombudsman in case the the reversal of secretary of justice the reversal of secretary of justice is withdrawal so it shall direct the prosecutor to dismiss or move for the dismissal or withdrawal of the complaint with notice the parties and this time the court has the jurisdiction or the discretion to grant the motion to withdraw or not when the information is filed within the court then it is within the jurisdiction of the court already oh when the file when the information is filed with the court then it is already in the jurisdiction of the court already the court may either grant the motion to withdraw the court may either to grant the motion to withdraw by the secretary of justice or proceed with the criminal case the court is the best and sole judge on what to do with the case before it so even though there is decision by the secretary of justice or uh, its decision is to withdraw the case file a motion to withdraw the complaint but the court has the jurisdiction whether or not to grant the motion or whether or not to grant the motion the remedy when the chief prosecutor denied the resolution of the investigating prosecutor so file a motion for reconsideration or reinvestigation within 15 days from the resolution of the chief prosecutor mm -hmm. so file mr if denial of mr or motion for investigation that's the time file immediately um, petition for review um, within 15 days from receipt of the resolution to the secretary of justice so again when there is denial of motion for reconsideration or investigation in the chief prosecutor's resolution go to the secretary of justice and file for petition for review if um, provided it is pending in the office of the president or secretary of justice if there is denied appeal um if the if the petition for review was denied or denied appeal file again file one time motion for reconsideration or reinvestigation within non-extendable 10 calendar days from receipt of the resolution on appeal so uh, from the result of the petition for review still denied um file an mr 
or motion for reconsideration within 10 days. If there is still denial of the motion for reconsideration, go to the Court of Appeals under Rule 65, which is Petition for Certiorari. After all the struggles, this time there is already filing of information to court. So, now, the judge... For the purpose of issuing warrant of arrest or the necessity of the accused to remain in custody and to issue search warrant, it will conduct its judicial um, function that, that is already preliminary examination to determine there is probable ex cost. Judges shall personally evaluate the resolution and its supporting evidence. Judge may dismiss the case if he finds no probable cause. Otherwise, he will issue warrant of arrest, commitment order, or search and search warrant. The determination of probable cause by the judge is for the issuance of warrant of arrest. He may order the prosecutor to present evidence to establish probable cause and resolve the same within 30 calendar days from the filing of information that is under Section 5, Rule 112. So, if the judge is in doubt, he may ask for additional evidences from the prosecutor within 10 calendar days. If the, judge, if the judge finds no probable cause, he will dismiss the complaint. If he finds probable cause, he will issue warrant of arrest, commitment order, if the accused is in detained or under custody of law, and sir, issue search warrant. If the judge is satisfied that there is no necessity for placing the accused under custody, issue summons instead of warrant of arrest.